Hey, everybody, Babylon Bee Interview Show, Kyle. Ethan. And coming up soon, John Cooper of Skillet. Mm. Yes, John Cooper of Skillet. Now, people have been interviewing John Cooper of Skillet a lot about the woke culture and like how all the Christians are getting all woke. And we kind of did, but we really kind of just got into like rock band. We were just fascinated just by like, He's played with all these secular bands and lived this crazy rock and roll lifestyle, but, but kept his faith through the whole thing. That seemed to be more of the angle we went with. We just said, hey, you got any cool stories? Yeah, this is definitely a got any cool stories episode. <laughs> and he had some cool stories. He did have some really cool stories. So he was a lot of fun. Yeah, cool guy. Um, and if you want to check him out. I forgot to ask him about his eyeliner, though. Oh, yeah. I wanted to yeah, know. I don't know how much eyeliner is too much eyeliner like for a Christian. A, it feels like a big step in your life. And yeah, when do you decide to, to put the like, eyeliner on? I'm going to go with the eyeliner. Yeah. And the first time, like, I don't know. It feels like maybe that would be a... <laughs> <laughs> I guess we should have asked him this. We should have worn eyeliner to interview. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> what Solidarity. Okay, so he, what? Plays vo- he sings vocals and plays bass for Skillet. He hosts the Cooper Stuff podcast. Cooper Stuff. Cooper Stuff. And if you go to his website, johnlcooper.com, you can get his book, Awake and Alive to Truth, Finding Truth in the Chaos of a Relativistic World. And if you get the audio book, he does the entire book in his <laughs> signature <laughs> screaming and singing at the same time. Awake and alive to truth. To truth. Awake. Yeah. Awake. With, for, without further ado, John Cooper. <laughs> Hi, John. <laughs> All right, everyone, we are here with a very exciting interview. This is shocking, really. It is, is shocking. what it is. Um, we're talking to a man who um, got famous during the late 90s uh, CCM boom. And he was a Christian. He believed in God, all that stuff, believed in the Bible. And now, today, he has come out and said that he still <laughs> believes in all that stuff. Oh, man. So it's an incredible story, that very rare and shocking. Hey, John. John Cooper, <laughs> Skillet, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> that, took me, that took me a second to get. I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 sorry. It, it's early. It's early. Yes, it is shocking. Still holding to the faith. <laughs> yeah, man. It feels like it. I don't know. I look back at all my heroes from that time, and I'm like, oh, yeah, they're all not Christians Dropping anymore. Like or maybe flies. never were. I don't know, but yeah. It can yeah. be kind of depressing, but but one thing that you're inaccurate on mm-hmm. is that we did not get famous in the late 90s. Okay. We started in the late 90s. Oh, okay. It took us 11 <laughs> years to get famous, but we got there. We got there. <laughs> oh, I heard of you in the late 90s, so to I me, know. you were famous. I it mean, felt thank like, you. Oh, yeah, because we were you, into the... Because we were in the CCM yeah. stuff, you know. Or do you call it CCM? It was like the... the what, you guys were on Forefront? When did you start out? Like, when do you... Yeah. What was your earliest days? No, that's true, actually. We were on, we were actually on a a very small label called Ardent. Ardent Mm -hmm. Music um, was through Forefront. So so we were on, they would call us Ardent Forefront. But uh, there's only a few um, bands on Ardent. Uh, If you remember Big Tent Revival, you Mm -hmm. remember them? Uh, I love Big Tent Revival. What would Jesus do? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's right. The song. What would Jesus do at my school? Oh, uh, I actually love Big Tent. Uh, Steve Wiggins is still a friend of mine, actually, and uh, and Steve Wiggins still loves Jesus too. Wow. Believes the authority of Scripture and everything. Oh, there's two of them. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty good news. Um, but yeah, they had, there was a, a bunch of awesome Christian music in, in the late 90s, in, in, in Tooth and Nail and all the rock stuff. You had hardcore. Uh, there was just so much great music. It was a pretty exciting time, actually. Was there a time when Skillet was KK? So I have this like memory of, because I went to all these Tooth and Nail shows back then. I swear there was this band. I swear it was called Skillet, but it was like one or two guys. And they opened. They were like the beginning of... Mm-hmm. Did you were you ever like a one or two man band? No, no. Okay. When we so started, just my we, memory is bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think the, I think you've gone insane. <laughs> you've gone temporarily It's probably another insane. similar sounding, like you know, it was like cast iron skillet or something. Some other name yeah. that sounded similar. Saucepan. <laughs> Sauce. Yeah, yeah. Saucepan. Maybe so. On um, tooth and nail. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, there goes my own question I had. <laughs> uh, you can go home now. You're done. <laughs> So you've been uh, making the rounds. You're talking about how c- all the crazy woke culture 
everyone's getting woke. And, yeah, uh, everyone's getting woke. And and you're boldly speaking out. So we uh, we en- highly enjoyed your viral Facebook post that you you posted where you talked about uh, you just kind of it was I think it was in the wake of uh, was it Josh Harris I kissed dating goodbye was oh, that when you right. posted that yes around that time it was Josh Harris and then s- somebody else <clears throat> three weeks like later Rhett and or, Link something. or something or. I, I don't know. There's been a bunch been, of them. Yeah, it was the worship a worship writer from Hillsong, and I can't remember his name. Marty Sampson, I think it was. Oh yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah, there wasn't a question there. I just said. So that. Do, you, do you remember when you posted that? Did you, <laughs> I, I, did you I like do it? remember when I posted. It. <laughs> <laughs> I remember because, uh, funny enough, you know, it had been for uh, for several years at the time. I had been thinking. I just feel like I'm going to explode. I, I like what is going on. And I wanted to say something, but then I was like, I, I had all these, these conflicting feelings. One of the conflicting feelings was there's so much hostility and so much volatility. Why say anything? What, why jump in and make it worse? Like there's already enough fuel to the fire. Just don't say anything at all. And maybe it'll go away. That was something that I had been wrestling with for a couple of years. And then another thought I had was, I'm just a singer in a rock and roll band. Nobody's going to care what I have to say about anything. Why even do it? And it was actually my wife that finally was like, because I I was just livid. I I was livid when, when after I said Joshua Harris and Marty Sampson, and I was just angry. And my wife was like, you need to write something about it. And I was like, why? Nobody cares what I have to say. (laughs) Nobody's going to even read it. And I think my Facebook page at the time, I only had, I think I had 3,500 followers or something. So I was just like, worst case scenario, my wife is right. She'll get mad at me if I don't write it. And I don't like to cross my wife. And so I'll write it. I'll post it. 3,000 people see it. No one cares. And so I posted it. And about two hours later, Corey, my wife, Corey was like, how's your post going? I said, Oh, I don't know. I just, I did it. I don't even really care. And I opened it up and it had like 2000 shares. And I was like, what's happening. And all of a sudden it started getting all these messages in and, and it became a whole thing. But that was really just because my wife made me do it. So there's a lesson. <laughs> Always listen to your wife. She knows best. <laughs> yeah. yeah. In that post, you talk about how when people leave the faith, they always act like they uh, they came up with this new objection to Christianity. Like they're like, yeah. oh yeah, can God make a rock so big he can't lift it? <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. The church exactly has never right. answered this before. <laughs> yeah, they're like, I got this great new idea. Nobody's ever thought it. And my name's Pelagian. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of like, <laughs> yeah, you're not the first person. That's what made me so mad about it. I'm not livid if somebody right. struggles with their faith. Lots of people struggle with their faith. I'm not super mad if somebody's like, I just don't believe in Christ anymore. I mean, that, that that makes me super sad, but it doesn't make me angry. What makes me angry is when people start trying to lead other people into their sin and they're leading them into their own uh, just arrogance and, and then making a case against Christianity uh, online. I'm just like, why don't you just go away quietly? Just go away then. But no, <laughs> they got to come on nobody can ask the hard questions. I mean, would God really send someone to hell? That's why I'm like, <laughs> my five-year-old kids can answer this for you. You know, send me an email address. Yeah. Anybody that's gone to any sort of catechism class knows the answers to these things. Gosh. Anyway, that really annoyed <laughs> me. I don't like when people dishonor God's name on a social media platform and then get mad when somebody else calls them out. I'm like, you're the one that did it, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe it's tied in with that, but it feels like we don't we don't really teach our kids these like how to think deeply about these things. You know, we're, we're and even us as adults, we read the latest Christian bestseller, but we don't go back and see that the church has answered all these questions over the last couple thousand years. Yeah, I think that that's fair. You know, I, I do think the church is, and, and when I say the church, obviously I'm including myself in this. It's not pointing fingers. I think we have not done a great job of teaching worldview, teaching like, uh, as you say, classic uh, classical understandings of history and the d- ways to think and philosophers. And and we haven't done a really great job of doing that because we've, we've just said all the Christian faith it's just going to be about like how to live your life today. 
you know, about how to make more money and how to be a nice person and how to make friends. And, and obviously the gospel affects your life today, but there's a whole lot of other implications of the gospel that we really don't teach. And so I think that Christians in general don't really understand exactly what the faith is that they claim to subscribe to. And I think we could be doing a better job, you know, um, us as parents, us as you know, church leaders or elders or influencers, whatever we are. And uh, so I, I, I'm glad that, to see so many people speaking out about the faith and, and the gospel and authority of scripture, stuff like that. Seems like it's also just human nature to not want to think too hard about your beliefs. Like you just kind of go, oh, that sounds good. I'll identify <laughs> with that. <laughs> and I think that's, that might be why the prevalence of I identify this way is so popular now because you just, you don't have to defend it or like get too deep into it. You just go, I, I identify this way and then boom, that's me. Yeah, and we have to respect it. Yeah. You know. yeah. And, and I do think that uh, Christians there's plenty of Christians that think that way. Like we've all been guilty of it. You just go, you know what? I feel really good at this church right now. Uh, I, f- I prayed this prayer and, and uh, this is my identity now. And like, you just kind of, you don't want to get, you don't want to think too hard about it. And I think, that, uh, mm. I don't know. There's, I, I think that's also an element. It's, it's a hard, it's always going to be an uphill battle to get people to really think about the hard stuff. Like you're, it's not never going to be an easy, like apologetics class. It gets everybody to just go, Oh, I got it now. I know what you mean. You know, certainly it's, it's certainly more comfortable to do whatever feels good all the time. You right, know, like, right. well, that's how I feel today. So, you know, it's, it's, you know, um, I actually wrote about this, you know, in my book, which uh, this would be my first plug for my book right, right. now. <laughs> I mean, not that I want to do it like that, but this is what it looks like in case Whoa. I was going to plug it. Um, your head, but, you got your head behind you. It's right there. It's, like, it's the this same is head way, everywhere. Way, uh, way too much of me. But, uh, <laughs> but I did talk thing. about uh, in, in the book, Awaken Alive to Truth. And I did talk about that. It's that, it's that being ruled by your feelings. I mean, mm-hmm. that in the end, is that not exactly what the serpent, you know, did to, said to Eve in the garden? It's a, it's, I can be my own God. I mean, I can do my own thing. And if it feels good, then I, I should be able to do that. And what that basically means is that we don't really dig God's way. I, I kind of want to do things. My Who doesn't want to do things their own way? That mm-hmm. That's kind of like the cornerstone of original sin, isn't it? So uh, it's an important thing, I think, to, to, to explain to your kids you know, to, for young people to understand that there is this pull on your emotions all the time to make it all about me. And that's going to lead you down to some really dark places and to lots of, of pain on earth and beyond. Do you think there's an aspect to, uh, you know, the in, in, in Christian music, I'm sure you've experienced this. I mean, you get like a young band. They're super cool. They sound really good. Like, whoa, they sound good. And the church immediately like puts them on a giant pedestal and they're like baby Christians, but they're immediately put into this place of being seen as like authority figures and somebody to emulate. And, uh, and then I think that could have a lot to do with a lot of these Christian artists who, you know, they, they suddenly hit this, they became a Christian icon when they were like a teenage Christian. And that's like the worst, (laughs) that's like the worst thing to you know, have, because when you become, have any kind of success in your life, that becomes like this, this thing that like calls back to you for the rest of your life. You want to get back to that (laughs) and wanting to get back to like the worst years of your Christianity, a teenager (laughs) seems like a bad precedent. I don't know what you can do about that, but I I don't know. What do you think about that? (laughs) Yeah, that's a, that, that's a fun, I like, I don't know why that was just funny sounding. (laughs) I'm just dying to get back to my worst years as a Christian. (laughs) Well, Um, I think that's a problem in that happens in a lot of rock bands, right? I mean, you see guys, they're like 50, sure. 60 years old, and they're still trying to be their 23-year-old self or whatever. Whatever they were when they became famous, that's yes. the life that you're trying to get back to or stick it's there. Like, uh, it's like Dr. Evil says, that there really is nothing worse than an aging hipster. <laughs> 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 that's not from the Bible, but it's from Austin Powers, and I still think it's true. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Certainly, I do think that there's an excitement that we all, I say we all, I don't know, it's a generalization. We all do have that like excitement when someone famous or someone talented in in the culture 
claims to be a Christian. You always see like, oh, I just heard that Justin Bieber's a Christian. Uh, is this, you know, <laughs> everybody gets excited about the idea of, of having a, a cool person on our side. And, mm-hmm. and certainly I think you're probably right about that. But one of the things I noticed early on in my career when I was not famous, but in the 90s mm-hmm. was that, uh, <laughs> you know, even in Christian music, there really was not a, there's not much understanding I mean, I don't want to throw people in the bus, so I'm not going to say names, and it's a, it's a way generalization, but... He will name th- names in the exclusive subscriber <laughs> portion, yes. <laughs> yes, that's right, that's right. Coming we'll talk up about soon. <laughs> James White under there. Yeah. No, um, you know, I'm joking, but... Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I think even in that, a lot of people don't, even in the market, they're talking about Jesus on stage, they're singing about Jesus, they're talking about Jesus in interviews, but they don't really understand their faith. And even with that lack of understanding of their faith, there seems to be a lack also of, of sanctification. And even in, even in a lack of an acknowledgement that we should be in a process of sanctification. So in, in, in my experience, some of the people that I've met, even on the road, that I've, I've talked to about overt sin in their lives, it's been taken very light, very, uh, it's not been taken very well. And where I was coming from a position of, oh, I thought we were all in Christian music. And I thought that meant we all were going to want to live for Jesus and pray together. And it's all about the gospel. And then I met people like, oh, these are either baby Christians maybe not even Christians, maybe they just grew up going to church, but they don't really know what they're talking about. And they do not want that measure of relationship and accountability. And that begins to kind of be a problem because then what you're doing is you're just faking it. So you're faking it on stage and uh, that kind of creates an issue too. So before you know it, a lot of those people end up in apostasy or certainly they end up in, in bad situations with sexual immorality, you know, fill in the blank. Hmm. Yeah. Can we just name some names and you can blink if. <laughs> what, yeah. Once for yes, two for yeah. no, or, or vice versa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I think part of it is exactly what you said, that we lift up these people that are just baby Christians. And I think part of it is is. Like, that's just how Christians are. Like, if I go back and I look at all the kids in my youth group, there's probably a large percentage that have gone apostate, but they're just not in the public eye like that. And so, there's no, like, it's not like people in the CCM world had to go to seminary or have any kind of training or there's any, you know, any gatekeeping there. So, I don't know, maybe it's something like that too. Yeah, I think it's very, very difficult because, you know, we do want to, we do want to impact culture for the gospel. So it's like we, we do want it, but it would be nice if there was a little bit more, maybe you should say pastoral care, uh, discipleship, sanctification, accountability, you know, all of these things, it would be really nice to, to find ways to do that. And I do, I have talked to a few people who say that they've begun to try to implement some of those things within certain labels. Uh, that, that wasn't my experience, you know, back in the day. Um, so I don't know. I do think it's a pretty hard, hard road there because we do want to impact culture for Christ, but, uh, there's some issues and we got to work on those things, you know? My notes say that you weren't allowed to listen to rock music growing up. Isn't that true? Oh yeah. Oh (laughs) yeah. My mom would hate my music. That's for sure. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. This is what you get. Here's a bunch (laughs) of tattoos. Uh, anyway, so yeah, you know, growing up, um, it's kind of a funny story. My mom was a piano teacher and a voice teacher and a flute teacher. Did she I sing t- like, like scream sing like you? Yeah. yeah. My mom did not scream sing. No, she no was not into screamo. No. She, 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 she didn't do any, you know, cookie monster screams. Yeah. Um, uh, Only when like, you're bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. So uh, I was raised in a household that loved music, but also felt that only uh, hymns or classical music, opera, things like that were okay. So when I was five years old is when I first heard anything outside of either classical or, or hymns. And I was at a friend's house and my friend was like, dude, you got to come watch this. It's called MTV. And I was like, what's MTV? And he's like, music television. And I'm like, I don't even I don't understand what music television could be. And he's like, there's videos. And so I see uh, Michael Jackson beat it, which is 
totally awesome. If people haven't, if you don't remember the Beat It video, it's it has like, um, they're like gangs, but they're they're knife fighting, but they're kind of like dance fighting mm -hmm. too. They're like dance knife fighting, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> which is like the best of everything. And uh, I like you describing it for all our homeschool listeners. <laughs> In case you haven't heard of the song, Beat It, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, that doesn't sound nice at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it was so good. So I came home and I was singing uh, Beat It to my mom. I thought, my mom loves music. She's going to love Beat It. And my mom <laughs> gave me the holiest butt whooping God ever created. All right. The holiest <laughs> butt whooping for singing the devil's music. And <laughs> that it was the beat that made people want to do evil things and the drums. And oh, it was so we fought about music for years and years and years. So it's kind of a funny story. Hmm. Yeah, that's kind of how I was raised. I mean, maybe not so hardcore, but, you know, I was all in. My first CD was like Michael W. Smith, you know. <laughs> yeah, which one? Which album? Do you know? It remember? was the Heart of Gold, I think. Nice. What it was called. Yeah, if I remember. Oh, right. man. I love Michael W. Smith's album, The Big Picture. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's when he started like rocking a little bit. Mm -hmm. I love that album. It's a great one. But yeah, my parents know Michael Smith, no Amy Grant. Uh, no Petra, but I finally convinced my parents, uh, this is a funny story and, and then I'll, I'll stop talking about it. But so That's eighth fun. grade, my mom was uh, really sick with cancer and we had been fighting about Christian. I wanted to listen to Christian rock music since I was in fifth grade and, and Christian rock music was even worse than rock music because they were wolves in sheep's clothing. Right. <laughs> and, you know, they were they were even worse. And so, um, you know, I went to like a seminar, a Bill Gothard seminar. I don't know if you remember Bill Gothard. <laughs> yeah. Very like fundamentalist. Yeah. Uh, and anyway. Eighth grade, my mom was really sick with cancer. My friends were going to see Petra on uh, the This Means War tour, which is an amazing album, by the way. And so I was, me and my parents were like having it out. So finally, my mom says, all right, here's the deal. You can't go with your friends. She says, I'll take you to see Petra. And when, not if, when Petra starts praying to the devil, <laughs> <laughs> then we're going to leave the concert and you will know that it's satanic or if they sacrifice any animals. When they bring <laughs> the goat on stage. <laughs> Once you start sacrificing the goat to Satan, that's when we're going to leave. And so we, we went to the show. The end of the concert, amazing. My mom looks at me and she said, you know what? Those boys love Jesus. So that was it. So Petra was okay. Nobody else is okay wow. but Petra. Huh. So that's the that's my funny uh, Christian music story yeah. for you. <laughs> she never took you to a striper show? Well, I got a striper story too. Oh, I was going to yes. end it because I promised I would, but now you got me into it. So then um, my mom was okay with, with Petra. So I convinced my mom to let me watch the Dove Awards. And I, if people don't know what Dove Awards, it's like the Christian Grammys or whatever yeah. back in. So again, I was in eighth grade. And because I was like, Petra might be on there. And my parents were really freaked out about watching the Dove Awards. So all of a sudden, this band that I had never heard of called Striper comes on and plays live at the Dove Awards. I don't know. It was legendary at the time. They were all in the full yellow and black spandex, the mm -hmm. big hair. <laughs> and uh, they come on and my mom was like, turns it off. Go to your room. And, and it was all night prayer session, man. All night prayer session. <laughs> oh, man. So I got I got to tell uh I got to tell Robert Sweet that when I met him that we had an all night prayer session because of your music, but not the good kind. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, they're literally the opposite of devil worship. They say to heck with the devil. So right. I don't get it. Uh, Striper right. was very, yeah, very bold about their faith. I think they probably didn't get as much credit as they deserved for that. Very bold about their faith. I mean, I know they had issues and whatnot, but I, I just think they deserve a lot of credit for doing something that no one else was able to do at the time. Yeah, and they were out there with secular bands a lot. Did you guys tour with a lot of secular mm -hmm. bands? Yeah, we still do. Yeah. yeah, and especially when we're in Europe. I mean, we tour secular bands in America. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we toured with Nickelback and Papa Roach and... Corn and whoever, <laughs> Godsmack, you know, all yeah. those bands. And when we're in Europe, we play a lot of festivals with everybody, Aerosmith, Linkin Park, nice. and 
Metallica, you know, all, all those, those great metal bands. And I, I love that. I love getting to get out into the world of music and play the music that, that God's given me and that I hope is full of the Holy Spirit. I hope that it pleases the Lord. And I hope that it, that it is throwing seed to people that normally would not hear about Jesus and, and would not be listening. That's what I hope anyway. You ever get any guys that are like closeted Christians in these bands? Like a guy, like a guy from Sn- Slipknot sneaks up to you and he's like, "Hey man, I want to read some Oswald Chambers." Just don't tell me. Oh <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, let's see. Um, well, uh, we uh, we have played with Slipknot. Are and, you outing uh, anybody? Uh, some out some of the guys are good friends of mine, but no, Slipknot <laughs> that I know of, not to my knowledge, it, are closeted Christians, but they are friends of mine okay. and. Um, but if they do get saved, it probably wouldn't be Oswald Chambers. That would be <laughs> radical enough. If they do get saved, it would have to be like straight up, you know, Calvin. I'm sure it would have to be somebody really radical that's put someone to death. <laughs> <laughs> Stabs people uh, in the face. Yeah, yeah I'm probably going to get quoted for saying that in a bad way. That's a joke. <laughs> it's a joke. But anyway, but there are, I will say this, every, every, Every band we tour with, uh, nearly every secular band we tour with has at least one member who, who grew up playing in a worship band at church or whose, whose dad was a pastor or mm-hmm. some sort of church leader. And every, just about every band we've toured with has said to me, hey, I actually am a Christian. I guess I'm kind of backslidden. I haven't thought about my faith in a decade or so. Can we pray together? Nearly every band. And so hmm. I always go, hey, Lord, if that's what you're doing, then you know God can do anything. So I'm here. I'm looking for those opportunities. And uh, I've, had some re- I've got some pretty great stories about that. Hmm. What is your mother's position on Carmen? <laughs> oh yes um he walks the line right he's between uh, i don't she'd be conflicted i, I, I bet johnny cash oh. I, I was about to say that's johnny cash you're thinking of um, but i mean between rock and gospel <laughs> yeah at the time i'd never heard of carmen to tell you the truth now my mom actually passed away when i was 14 mm. uh, from cancer she was very ill for a really long for almost for three years intermittently i guess i should say but she passed away when i was 14 and it was after that that I really got into to playing music. And it was obviously a non-issue at that point. So I'd not really heard of Carmen at that time, but hmm. who knows? She probably would have been okay with Carmen. Okay. How can you not be? He's so nice looking, you know? Yeah, he's so yeah. looking guy. <laughs> Such a nice young boy. Such a nice <laughs> yeah. young man. He's a, he's a nice young yeah. boy. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Well. Well. So, uh, you know, when I was growing up, I'd go to the Christian bookstore. They would have this big poster like... Uh, if you like uh, Coldplay, listen to Switchfoot, you know, or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> what, yeah. was, what was the skill? That, I mean, was it like Evanescence or what, what was Oh, the... no. For us, what they do is in secular bookstores, they have posters that say, if you like Skillet, you'll like. <laughs> that's, how it is. <laughs> that's, how, that's how big we are. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, yes. Anyway, um, yeah, let's see. We get comparisons. Um Certainly, Evanescence could be a comparison. Linkin Park. Um, I've even heard, let's see, who is the comedian? Um, uh, John Christ, a few years ago, he had a funny Facebook, one of his, you know, things that he would do at the time. And I think this is before I'd met John Christ, and I saw it on Facebook. And um, what was it? He was com- he was comparing. He was doing what you just said. And like, mm-hmm. hey, some people have Coldplay, but we got Switchfoot and and and. I know what it was. I think it was a game show. I think he was doing a game show to test if someone was really a Christian. And so he was saying, I'm going to name a secular band and you give the Christian counterpart. That's what yeah. it was, which is a kind of funny idea. And I think that he said Nickelback and somebody was like, I don't know, Skillet. And um, <laughs> so Sad. when I, yeah, when I met John Christ, he had this like sheepish, look on his face like, I wonder if John, and I said, man, I thought that video was hilarious. I was just thrilled to be involved in the video. It means that people know who I am. So I'll take, I'll take Nickelback. You take I don't Nickelback, think we huh? actually sound like Nickelback. Yeah, no, but, no. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I like Nickelback and they're good friends of mine uh, and, and they sold 50, five, zero million records. Yeah. So I don't mind sounding like Nickelback, but I don't think that we do. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Well, we were thinking you're kind of more of the Christian version of Evanescence because you don't let the woman talk as much. 
Yeah, you're like, with the biblical, like, <laughs> she, <laughs> put them in their place a little more. There's, you know, there's got to be a male singer on stage at the same time. Yes, we're the complimentarian yeah, version. version. We're the complimentarian <laughs> Evanescence. How about that? It's, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, that's pretty funny, actually. It's, uh, you guys should do comedy. Yeah, we're thinking about getting into it. <laughs> we're trying to use this interview show as a springboard to get into comedy. <laughs> you should do that. It's thinking not a bad idea, actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, man, I have all so many stupid questions here that I'm like, I can't ask that right now. That's a yeah, stupid I was like, question. who wrote these notes? I, I think, know, I'm trying to think. Oh, Ethan Muster. Yeah. So let's just, I just rattle like them off. Stories. So much. Yeah, you stupidity. want to get into them? Just <laughs> ask the stupidest questions ever. Wouldn't Crockpot be a better name for a Christian band? No, it's a terrible name. No, no. The only well, way. At least Baptist. Uh, <laughs> Well, I mean, let's rewind. I think this skillet is not a great name for a band, but it was the 90s. And I tell people, you had to blame it on the 90s, man. There was the weirdest, right? Be honest. The weirder your band name was, the more popular you became. Uh, because, for instance, Corn. Mm -hmm. That's not a great name for a band. The only reason that corn is cool is because it's with a K. So if you had crock pot with a K. There you go. Uh, there you go. Uh, now I you like might that. be on to something. That actually does. Yeah, that has a real ring to it. Especially if it's yeah. written like a five-year-old wrote it just as they were. Uh, yeah, because Satan. it get, uh, something about the way that corn is written. It gives you that feeling of there's something not quite right with this band. And yeah. Which there isn't, which is why the music's so good, you know. So, uh, well, hey, they had a convert, right? Absolutely, yeah. Brian, yeah, you stuck with it? You Brian stuck Welch is a very, very, uh, very serious follower of Jesus. Mm. You know, I, I remember thinking, I wonder if this is going to be real or not. A very serious follower of Jesus and and a friend and and if anybody cares, I don't know if they do or not. We toured with Corn what two, three summers ago undoubtedly the best band I have ever seen play. Hmm. Absolutely the best band hands down I've ever toured with. Corn? There you go. Corn, You're talking about yeah. corn? Okay. I am. Just confirming. Yeah. <laughs> You're confirming. They were huge the for a while. That's great. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Confirming. That's a good one. Yeah, it kind of sucks. You pick a band name when you're younger. And then you're stuck with it. Like, you can't change now. <laughs> I mean, unless it comes out as that skillet is like a racist word or something. You know, that's yeah, how, like, you gotta Lady change your name. Um, the Dixie Chicks. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so maybe we could help you out and expose yeah, like skillet chicks. as... Yeah, yeah skillet that are from the ties South. ties to the Old yeah. South or something. Yeah. And we, <laughs> I, am from, I am from the South, so you never really know. <laughs> yeah. Skillet is not... A, here's the good news about skillet, is that now... <laughs> <laughs> we finally got popular enough that if you go Google Skillet, the band actually comes up, not just <laughs> a cooking show. It used to be a cooking show that came up. I'm like, man, it's like Spinal <laughs> Tap. If I told him a thousand times, put Spinal Tap uh, above the above the puppet show. I don't know if you remember that from the film Spinal Tap. <laughs> yeah, classic. So in the yeah. Christian entertainment industry, there's a lot of horrible ideas going around. <laughs> You'll need somebody who's like, hey, we got this idea. We'll do this crazy movie where, like, you know, Satan gets punched or something. Or I don't know. Some, <laughs> you ever get invited to do crazy, like, ridiculous things? I see what you mean. You know, I'm trying like to figure out, like, going you know, on behind a podcast, the scenes. Like with, going on the, the Babylon, Babylon B podcast. B podcast B. Stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, like, for it's your satire. stage show, we're going to have a giant... <laughs> Satan that you guys shoot with laser guns or something or like you know that's like actually that? an awesome idea yeah, that'd be pretty cool actually. now <laughs> that would actually be worth that would be worth seeing in fact you might see that at a Slipknot show funny enough it's true anyhow um, <laughs> you know I do think that there's a fine line it's the second Spinal Tap quote fine line between clever and stupid <laughs> and uh, you know like Iron Maiden uh, it, who we've also played with by the way Iron yeah. Maiden does all these things I remember when I was we played with Iron Maiden two years ago in uh, I, I think it was in Hungary and I remember I told my wife I was watching this set and I said if this was a Christian band doing exactly what they're doing right now it would be cheesy yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's only it, it's only awesome <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, it's tongue in cheek, I guess. I mean, you know, but it's, yeah, I do think there's a fine line. Sometimes, I don't know, sometimes it's, it's all in the way that you present the thing. And, and a little bit of cheese can go a long way to doing something good. But I have been asked <laughs> to, to promote certain films 
that that I haven't that I just don't want to be involved in. Like some of the uh, the super like end time, you oh, know what yeah. I mean? Like the super <laughs> fantastical end time theology. I'm like, I don't want to get into <laughs> eschatological Christian films. That's just not. Yeah, you guys do the soundtrack. You like the. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Once again, Iron Maiden could do the soundtrack, and it might be awesome. <laughs> but for a Christian band to do it, all of a sudden, it has that little twist. That yeah. little twist. Little twist. Little twist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know, Iron Maiden does it. The number of the beast. Oh my gosh, I I love Iron Maiden. I know that's maybe not popular with some folks, but yeah. it's really good music. Huge fan. We're always bumping Maiden in the studio here. So just yeah. crushing Maiden, crushing Maiden. <laughs> yeah. Well, you you guys do a lot of male and female duets in Skillet. Yes, very complimentary. Yes, we do. <laughs> you have you ever thought of doing any of the famous male female duets, like uh, a whole new world? Oh, we, we, like we really should. Similar. Yeah, maybe it's don't cold you outside. dare close your eyes. Yeah, yeah um, <laughs> but do a skillet style. Don't yeah, but here's, <laughs> close your eyes. <laughs> but there is more chance of us getting canceled for doing an old Disney film than there would be with the name Skillet because they're canceling all their stuff. So you just you never know. Don't do not touch Aladdin. Well, we're not, you just don't, you don't know what might happen. We're not saying but. do a song at the South. We're saying, you know, Aladdin, you'd probably be okay with Aladdin. Well, I don't know, because Disney's canceling all their old stuff. So I, I just don't know. Yeah. You don't know when, like, the raging mob is going to come for you. But we really could do some sort of theatrical duet. But we, we are known for those duets. You know, I like it. It reminds me of uh, Fleetwood Mac. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm a big Fleetwood Mac fan from the 70s. Or about you're the reason our kids are ugly, little darling. That one? You heard that one? Uh, I actually don't know that. I don't know that one either. <laughs> it's great. It's I know that I've heard it said to me before. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you have kids? I got two teenagers. Yeah. Yeah. You, 18 and 15. Do you ever use your metal voice to get their attention? Uh, yeah, I, I used to. Yeah. yeah. And full name. You got to go full name on them. <laughs> middle First name. Middle, yeah. Uh, full on yeah. you gotta let these kids know what's up up in here yes <laughs> yeah and then my kids like i i promise and i'm like swear to me <laughs> just like batman did you know <laughs> do you bleed <laughs> i don't use that one you will yeah, you will <laughs> yeah. it, honestly it goes great it goes yeah. great perfect <laughs> do your kids think you're cool is there any uh, hope for your kids thinking you're cool you know, I've got such a great relationship with my kids. I, I, they do think that I'm cool. Um, I don't think they would listen to Skillet's music. <laughs> you know, I, I, it's not it's not urban enough. You know, it's not hip hop enough. They've been uh, yeah. raised in this culture of urban music. Um, but so I don't think they would like Skillet's music. But they do think that we're cool. My, it, all jokes aside, my kids love Christ. And they've loved Christ since they were a kid. So they've always seen what we do is as mission field. And so um, my kid, my daughter got to uh, pray with the uh, son of a band that we toured with to accept Christ as, a, as his savior, you know, on the road, you know, touring in Europe. And so my kids have always thought like that. So they think it's very cool that there's a gospel message happening in this world where everyone you meet, meaning all the musicians we meet and, and tour with, you know, it's all about yourself. You know, when you're a rock star, it's all about self glorification. And I think they've always liked the countercultural. No, we're rock stars, but it's not about self glorification. It's about Christ glorification. And they caught on to that as young people. So they think that's kind of quite cool. I like how that's countercultural. Just <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> be a normal person. Well, Christian, you know, I, well, it is when, when they've been, when you've been raised all around quote, rock stars, you know, yeah. even in the, the secular music world mainly is what, what I mean. But yeah, yeah. well, and actually, eh, we'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> well, John will finish his thought in the subscriber portion. That's right. We're going to get into... Uh, We're going to get into the nitty gritty. He's going to tell us all the dirt on everybody. Yeah, yeah the nitty gritty. Uh, uh, tell us some... 
stories from the road. We've I, I remember hearing you had some issues with pyrotechnics a few times. I want to hear some of those oh, stories. Oh, man, we've got some stories. I yeah, want stories. Yeah. We like, like light the like campfire up, and you just start telling us stories. Yep. Yeah, in fact, three days ago, my wife's hair got caught on fire. And so there's a side. <laughs> this is true story. Just about not three days ago, she burned about that much of her hair off from, from the front of her. So there, wow. she still looks pretty. Hmm. But that's rock and roll. That's rock and roll, baby. That was on the stage? Actually, I know it was, it was backstage. She was uh, doing someone's makeup for a video performance, and somebody had put a candle quite mm. close. Mm. And all of a sudden, somebody was like, your hair is on fire. And I was <laughs> like, that's rock and roll, baby. Come on. <laughs> it's just like Striper said, keep the fire burning. Gotta move on. You guys remember that song? Yep. <laughs> that was on uh, To Heck With The Devil, as yes. you said earlier. Yeah, classic. <laughs> great <laughs> album. Still a great album. Still great. You think their hair would catch on fire more with all that Aquanet? If anybody's would, you would have thought so. A absolutely, you know. So yeah. uh, I don't know. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Subscriber portion. Let's do, do it. it. Coming up next for Babylon B subscribers. Um, in fact, I have a funny story about Creed. Yes, if yes. you hear it, let's see. Fist bump. This is one of the story. biggest. Uh, <laughs> But I did call a pyrotechnician and we, we did get insurance, we did do whatever, but we didn't really have the crew that we should have. And so <laughs> for the first three weeks. Uh, one of the first search terms that comes up says John Cooper falling on stage. There's one in particular that's actually kind of quite amazing. Enjoying this hard hitting interview? Become a Babylon Bee subscriber to hear the rest of this conversation. Go to BabylonBee.com slash plans for full length ad free podcasts. Kyle and Ethan would like to thank Seth Dillon for paying the bills, Adam Ford for creating their job, the other writers for tirelessly pitching headlines, the subscribers, and you, the listener. Until next time, this is Dave D'Andrea, the voice of the Babylon Bee.